Having said that, we can move to the next slide. We begin with school curriculums. Zola Bantu is doing a very amazing job having those classes and try to unpack things, bringing meaning to things differently from how they are being conceived, both in Christianity and in Islam. And here is school curriculums. A school curriculum is, is a, a refers to those lessons and academic content that is being taught in a school or in a specific course or a program, including the Zolabantu classes. Those are they, they have a curriculum, a specific curriculum, which is far removed from the Western curriculum. So school curriculum, this is normal school or uh, the, the school, the daily school in Africa. It's full of lessons and academic content that people learn. This could include subjects and subject, especially in primary and secondary uh, schools and units, uh, particularly in uh, colleges and uh, universities. So these curriculums are designed to impoverish students. If you look keenly from these curriculums, they are being designed to impoverish students, narrowing their thinking capacity, killing innovation, and putting attention on marks and academic achievements. So when I put these words here, they just flowed from my, my mind because I have some experience as a teacher. I was a teacher in the Congo in 2003. I also been a teacher in Tanzania, in Dar es Salaam, for two years, 2004 and 5. And other years, uh, around 2008 to 2014, 15, all those have been teaching in uh, Kenyan schools. Started as a primary school teacher, and then I, the other four years I taught in high school. So if I can recall back on how I was teaching history and government, and Faith O'Gara can correct me if I'm wrong, we explain a lot, like third, that means 75% of the, the, the history curriculum in Kenya is based on, uh, on the history of missionaries, how missionaries came, how the wars were fought. And in, in Form 4, we stress much on First and Second War, World War. Those World Wars are European wars, but we tend to say that they are World War. So you, you subject students on mastering the dates of every event. And in Form 3, there is also a French Revolution with Napoleon, Bonap Napoleon Bonaparte. That's almost the same with what I was also teaching in the Congo in French. La Révolution Française, avec Napoleon Bonaparte, avec Hitler de l'Allemagne, things like that. So you, you, you spend a lot of time explaining how Hitler and the other people fought in their countries forgetting your own people, Mobutu and Kenyatta and other fighters, and, and, and Thomas Ankar, other fighters who are with you in the continent. That's rubbish. So it's like impoverishing the students, putting more emphasis on foreign knowledge. I was also teaching Faith Oger. I was also teaching CRE, Christian Religious Education, from 1 to from 4. Most of it is like trying to push the Western explanation of understanding of God to how we understand God. And in Form 1, I would like, we, we had topics that say this is what happened in the Bible and this is what happened in African uh, cultural heritage. Then you find everything common. There are similarities in Bible and in Africa, ancient African heritage. 
Why do they try to put them separately? Because they want to claim that this Bible story is far removed from the African context. But in the end, there's polygamy being throughout the Bible and polygamy throughout the African context. What's the difference? That's the same story, but it's being twisted to let people believe that it's different from each corner. That's how the curriculum was designed, to make you understand that things are different. But when you begin to analyze, you find this is the same thing. And narrowing the thinking capacity is in the way where people put more attention on this, on what happened, looking at what is happening now. 70 or 80 percent of what is taught in schools is not what we are living in now. Many of the contents we cover are of what happened. So after graduation, you only have stories of what happened. Instead of this man was a very big man, that one was big one. So you keep a lot of memories of people and what they, they did in the past. That's the problem with uh, our education curriculum. And Killing innovation, I don't know whether my, I still audible. Yes, you are. Thank you. Yes. Killing yes. innovation is in the context where people are focused, students are focused on what is being taught to them. And no teacher gives a dime to welcome any suggestion from student. So the teacher teaches while standing, showing that they are at the top of what they are teaching. Sometimes they don't teach with books referring to any slide like this. I remember when I was teaching, you don't have to be looking into the books very much because you, they will uh, disqualify you like in, a, in our teacher college. So they had to tell us how you need to do prior preparation of the material you want to teach. So that when you, st you stand before the student, you are looking at them and you have that knowledge in your head. Guess what? You have just memorized what was written in those books and you begin to vomit what you've memorized. After whatever you memorized is finished, the lesson is over. What does it mean? Whatever you've told the student is not even applicable to your own life. I remember at university in Kenya, we had a, 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 a teacher who was teaching us Kiswahili Luga. So the teacher was very good at explaining materials in Kiswahili Luga because there is Kiswahili Luga and Kiswahili Fasihi. For you, Mr. Avi, Kiswahili Luga is grammar. Grammar in Swahili, you learn so many things. It's a very broad language. And Kiswahili Fasihi is, a, a, is literature. Swahili literature on how you combine sentences and combine proverbs and, and, and sayings and the history of how the language evolved. This guy who was teaching Kiswahili Luga used to explain material very well. But after he has completed his lecture, when you meet him outside, he speaks a different Swahili. He speaks a street Swahili, the slang of the street. So he doesn't speak the academic Swahili which he teaches in class. So that one is only in class. After his one or two hours of lecture, if you are to meet him somewhere and you try to speak Swahili, he will start ex uh, speaking the Swahili which is just around everyone, which is not academic. Why? Because... For him to teach Swahili, it is because he performed well in Swahili. So be, based on his performance, he was given opportunity to teach Swahili. But he is not a Swahili speaker himself. But he knows those things. He knows how to put them together for you to understand the lesson. But the lesson itself is not applicable to his life. So that's just an example. And that's why you see many teachers, their level of life is very low. 
because they don't put what they teach in practice. They only master it at the time they, were, they deliver the material. And the, and the time they start marking the exams, they need to have marking schemes with them. Fiche de réponse. They need to have that one to refer, which means the same exam which the teacher gives the, gives the student, if we are to allow that teacher to answer the same exam, the same teacher won't even score 80% because he can't master all those questions or uh, answers. He will begin to mark the exam using marking schemes. Then you begin to realize that whatever they are teaching, they don't know what they are teaching. They are just following the book and making matter, matter worse. The person who wrote the book did not attend school. He is someone who designed the, these things according to their political orientation. And they say, these are the things we need to teach in school. So they designed those, those things and put in the, in the book and begin to teach. You find out that the Minister of Education did not graduate in, a, in, a, in an educational program. He didn't attend any pedagogical school, but is a minister of education. Is reinforcing how education should look like. But his career is mathematics, or his career is chemistry, but is standing to lead education. You find someone who is the minister of agriculture who has done English literature. What he knows is Shakespeare thing, kind of things. He, he is speaking English as if he's an English person. But now you give the same person to oversee agriculture sector. So he will begin to teach those plants how to breathe in English. Instead of breathing the air to produce plants, he wants to have every single uh, grass around him <laughs> be referred in English. How that's My how God. innovation is being killed. Because people we had even a principal, because he's been a teacher for too long, he has been teaching uh, uh mathematics and geography, and he has excelled, his students have been passing well after like being a teacher for eleven years, he was promoted to be a a principal, but he doesn't have any administrative background. So what does he do? He will be following the books. Those books at the office. This is how they do this report. This is how. The, so they are like there is no innovation. He is just copying what others have been doing. Maybe he's just changing dates. If this report was in 2010 and he's doing a report in 2012. We just change the date, change a few things from that report, and print it and put his name at the, at the end of the report. So the thinking capacity is narrowed because we learn what we don't know from people who don't know what they are teaching us. And then innovation is being killed. After that, there's this putting attention on marks and academic achievements. I'll speak from Kenyan experience. In Kenya, a female student in Form 4, Form 4 in Kenya is like Form 6 in, in Congo or in Uganda. A, student, a female student who scores C+, plus is given scholarship to go straight to university for bachelor degree course. But a male student with C plus is not given that opportunity. And this started somewhere around 2001 with Martha Karua, when she was a, a minister of, uh, of, uh, of education. She divorced from his husband Karua, and then she began to develop that hatred from males. And then she said, no, we need to give equal opportunity to female. So female who are being given opportunity to attend university with lower marks, than male counterparts. The male will attend university when they get B+. In the end, 
if you can go on uh, on any on google and search the, the the graduation trends in kenya you will find many uh female are graduate at uh, uni courses than male because they are being given opportunity to attend with lower marks so what matters there in that education school curriculum the attention is on max and academic achievement not on equity or equality of people or what they can do better so attention is on max that's how the school curriculum is being designed to put your attention on max so that you don't understand whatever else is being happening the other side and whoever does not score much is not given an opportunity to attend the university. Guess what? Those who don't go to university, they begin business. In four years, they, they begin to employ those who went to university. That's why uh, there is uh, now bills. Bills are being passed in the country these few days and people are, are rioting all over because employment is rampant in the country. They are having too many uh, graduates. Looking into the Congo, there is no even criteria. You get your 50 marks, you are good to go to university. You pay school fees by yourself. Guess what? Even teachers who teach, they don't know what they are teaching. In the end, you give them money, they don't even mark your exam. They just put marks. Then you graduate, you begin to speak a lot of French around, you go back into your kitchen, there's no food, but you have French all over. So your innovation is being killed because of whoever teaches you does not know what they are teaching you. So after you get all those marks, you also apply to be a teacher, you keep on repeating the same information that was given to you. You don't have any time to research, no time even to analyze whether whatever you are being taught is true.